Okay, here we're at St James's Cemetery in Dover. Um, this, this corner of the cemetery is known as the Brugger Corner, and it's where 66 sailors and uh, Royal Marines who died during the Zeebrugge Raid were buried on the uh, 27th of April 1918. That was about four days after the raid. So let's have a look. I'll take, let me show you some of the some of the graves. So here we have the grave of Sub Lieutenant Morris Lloyd. He was aboard HMS Cipher Genoa. He was he was he was um, he retrieved the white ensign from the HMS Cipher Genoa after it reached its scuttling position. Um, he got the white ensign, retrieved it from the the uh, the aft of the of of of, 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 the, of the cruiser. And at one point he was wounded. It was a mortal wound. They wrapped they wrapped the white ensign around his body, um, and uh, they wrapped him up. And they, they got him on a motor launch, and they, he he was transferred to HMS Warwick, which was uh, where uh, Admiral Keyes was coordinating the operation. Um, he was taken back to to Dover. Admiral Keyes knew that he he was he, he was in a critical situation, and it wasn't expected that he would live. So when so, so soon, as soon as they arrived in Dover on the 23rd of April 1918, Keyes saw that he, he saw, saw, saw um, Morris Lloyd carted off to the, the uh, hospital ship HMS Liberty, which is moored in Dover, Dover Marina, and he contacted Buckingham Palace to ask permission from the King if he could award um, Morris Lloyd for, action, for his actions at Zebrugger, and, he, 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 and the, the, the king gave him permission to award him the DSC, the Distinguished Service Cross. So Keyes went back to the Liberty and told him the news. And, and sadly, Morris Lloyd passed away um, within 24 hours. But the flag, the White Ensign, is on display in the Dover Museum. It still has this poor chap's um, bloodstains on, on, on that memorial. I mean, next to him, we have. There's a grave of Private Whitwar and Lieutenant Chamberlain. Now, Lieutenant Chamberlain was a bald. The Vindictive is part of B Company, naval um, landing party on the Mole. He was a. Uh, they, they were charged to create a diversion on the Mole to enable the block ships to to uh, enter the harbour and get, reach their scuttling positions. Um, he he was with Abel Seaman Mackenzie, who won the who was received the oh, sorry awarded the Victoria Cross. For the, for the action, um, he was only a few survivors from B Company, and it was Chamberlain, Mackenzie, and leading seaman William Child. So they got onto the mole, uh, and they, they, they managed to get onto the lower mole. At which point, they, they saw they saw some German sailors dashing for for the uh, other side of the inner mole, where some destroyers moored alongside, both on the inner, on the, on the inner mole, um, and Mackenzie opened fire with Lewis gun. That treated the retaliatory fire, and this is where Chamberlain was uh, mortally wounded. Here we have, you know, it's, it's Royal Marines, sailors buried side by side. Most, well, all, all these took part in the Zebrugger raid. This chap here. Private Stanley Jackson. No, the epitaph emphasised the point he's from York. Um, the reason being, his family wanted him buried in York. Instead, the wrong remains were sent to York, and Jackson was buried here in error. Um, it was only about a, couple, about a week or so afterwards that the family were told. But there were several Jacksons killed during the operation. Jackson was part of B Company, the ports of company on board HMS Vindictive and he was killed as they approached the, uh, the, 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 the mole either by shell fire or, or machine gun fire. There's a 
view of the, the graves from this slope. At this point on this slope, there was a white ensign flying above above the graves on the day when these, these chaps were buried on the 20th of April 1918. And there was face, there were representatives of all face who conducted the service. If we let's go back, this is the grave of Admiral. Admiral Keyes, he passed away in 1945 and it was his wish that he would be buried here as Zabura Corner with the men he commanded during the Zabura operation. Adjacent to his grave, there is the, there's another memorial to, to Keyes. Note, St George and the Dragon. Reference to St George's Day, the day that the Zebra Road was carried out. Also, there's a dedication to Keyes' son, Lieutenant Colonel Geoffrey Keyes, who was killed during a raid on Rommel's headquarters in Libya. He, he, he was buried in Benghazi. There's also Lists of places that were connected with Keyes' life. You see, he's a brigger there. Some of the World War II actions that he was involved in. Note some of these soldiers, some of these sailors and marines are um, unknown, and I'll talk about that in a minute here. This chap here, Gilkerson, he states he was on board HMS Vindictive, he was killed during the operation. Um, I've found recently that he, his name is listed on the memorial that, that was on one of the, uh, the, the successes to the old Irish that were in Mersey, the river on the River Mersey, and it's possible that this is, there was an administrative area when, when, when they denoted that he was on the Vindictive because this memorial states that he was part of the, the naval assault party that was on HMS Iris, the Mersey ferry boat. So again this is another example of errors, administrative errors that were being made um, after the after the raid. Here we have the grave of Petty Officer Hallahan. He was killed trying to rescue Lieutenant Commander George Bradford, um, who, who fell in between the Iris and, and the, the Mole, where when Bradford was trying to fix the grappling iron to the Mole to secure the, the vessel alongside. Hallan tried to save Bradford as he fell in, but he was crushed between the, the Iris and the Mole. His body was retrieved and was brought here for burial. Next to him is the, the grave of the Yeoman of Signals, John Buckley, DSM. He was based up on the, well, he, he was positioned on the Conning Tower. He was, he was involved with signals during the operation and he was found by the Conning Tower um, by a box of flares. Private Campbell, he's from C Company, Plymouth Company. He served under an, an alias. He, he served under as an alias of Private Conkey. And the reason why he may have Using an alias was because he might have, may have been underage when, when he enlisted. Now I'm going to briefly show you some of the names listed on the Cross of Sacrifice. These chaps listed on this, uh, on the Cross of Sacrifice, are the names of sailors who are believed, and Marines, who are believed to have been buried here in, in the unmarked graves. Now, let me have a look, here we are. We've we got, we got ordinary seaman Harry Bennewith. He originated from South Africa. His mother had a premonition on 23rd of April, 19, the day that he took part in the operation that something was gonna to happen to him. And 
and her fears come to fruition. Harry um, was a young lad, and he he, he was he was one of the gunners on Vindictive on the forecastle, and uh, several of the gun crews were, were, were wiped out in succession. So the, the, the fire was so severe when they went alongside the alongside the mole. The chap beneath him, Mr. Beneath him, Charles Gwenigol, he, he his body was initially identified when when they brought him to Dover. His identity disc and a ring that could identify him was removed from the body, and 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 uh, the, 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 his remains become lost, um, the, 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 unable to identify. When when the identities were taken away, and he was buried here, and it wasn't until a year later when the uh, the authorities realised what had happened, and they did have his identity disc and this this, this ring that they notified his father a year later that he was buried in an unmarked grave here in Dover.